Good morning. Thank you, Phil, and thank you for uh, attending this session. We feel very honored to be here as finalists of the European River Prize. We, that's Daniel Parks. Daniel Parks is the Daniel River Network of Protected Areas. Myself, I'm Karl Manzana. I'm working for the Donau National Park, which is here in Vienna, from Vienna, covers the Danube stretch from Vienna to Bratislava, and I'm the president of this new organization. Um, Danube Parks is a network of protected areas along the river Danube, so we have a clear focus, one river. We have one member on the Save River, but that is meant to be the nucleus for a new Sava Parks network that sooner or later we hope will emerge. Uh, the network covers uh, at the moment 20 protected areas um, in nine Danube countries, nine out of ten, only the Ukraine is missing. Um, the real activities started 2009, so five years ago. There have been preliminary activities, bilateral, transnational, transnational uh, an initiative in 2007 where we all came together the first time. Phil was very supportive at, at this stage and ICPDR. So Daniel Park is a platform for continuous transnational cooperation to develop and implement joint conservation strategies all along the Danube a coherent management practice of the protected areas and the common corporate identity of Danube River protected areas. And the idea behind this, in the end, to strengthen each single protected area in their work at home. Then we are successful. So what made it possible to be really active and not just convene and just have meetings is the Southeast European program. Um, uh, from the, the European program for Southeast Europe, and Daniel Parks was successful in applying for two projects, one 2009 to th 2012, and the second one follow-up 2012 to 2014, and the project reports are available outside. So there were about yeah, 150, roughly 150 activities ranging from river restoration uh, to uh, floodplain management, river and forest management, to uh, species <coughs> conservation, to um, nature uh, tourism, nature education, uh, comprising the whole range of activities that protected areas are involved in. So, yeah, and it's no time to tell you about all these activities. Uh, so the difficulty is to say what's the essence and what, what is it all about. First, it's about protected areas. So here we have the Danube River as candidate for the River Prize. And for the Danube River, you have institutions like ICPDR, who has won the prize already. You have institutions like NGOs, like Danube uh, WWF, the new Carpathian program, and you have the protected areas. And the protected areas have a specific role and a specific value in this uh, range of institutions. They comprise the jewels of the Danube. You know, all the, the best parts of the Danube, they are protected areas in all countries, and they are member of Danube parks. But what is important, not, they are, not only that they are protected by law, but that they have an efficient management. So it's about protected areas management. And what's so special about this? What we have, we have this focus on implementation. Because we work on the spot, um, and we have a day-to-day -day involvement with a wide range of stakeholders and opinion makers. So we work cross-sectoral every day. And we have a 
millions of visitors and a lot of regional communities, which are directly addressed uh, by protected area managers and where we are involved. So that's our specific role, our specific strength. And if we speak about the network of protected area, in fact, it's a network of people. And that are the people behind it. And they're all very committed people. And that's what it makes also so rewarding to, to work in this network. But maybe they have one weak point. I said they work on the spot, they work on the front. We are all very much involved in our local business. And we have very much this local perspective. And I can tell you that from myself. That's our perspective. That is the view from Hamburg. There's a mountain, and it's the view over our national park, and it's the view westbound. We look to the west. But if you're on this mountain, and if you turn around, and if you look to the east, you see Bratislava, and there are very nice pieces of flood, flood plain, only a few hundred hectares, but very, of very high value, just, just behind the border. And if I take myself, I'm involved in this Danube floodplain business for more than 30 years, fighting against the hydropower plant, being in the planning group, etc. But it took me 20 years of involvement to see this place. Yeah? And it's just over the border. Of course, it's Iron Curtain and all this history, but the Iron Curtain has fallen yeah, 25 years ago. So it's not evident that we all have this uh, river-wide view, and usually we don't have it. And if we look at the Danube as a whole, this catchment approach, then, yeah, that's where we are. And this is just a very little part of some, something much, much bigger. 30 years ago, we were fighting, and we say, we, this is the last uh, natural flat plain of Europe. And most of us believed it, yeah, because we didn't have this, we didn't, have, we didn't know the Danube uh, east of, uh, of Vienna, or the east of the Slovak, Austrian Slovak border. So, if we look at one of our flagship species, like the white tailed eagle, they look at it different. Um, they have a much wider range than we had. And in our national park, they were extinct. So there were no breeding pairs for more than, for many decades. And shortly after the national park was established, they came back. So we were very proud. We took all our efforts to protect them. Um, to, to monitoring them, and we were happy. But within the Danube Park project, we started a first Danube-wide wild-tailed eagle winter census, involving also the white public. So over 3,000 kilometers of rivers, more than 300 experts at, in the same, at the same time were counting and looking for the wild-tailed eagle more than 3,000 3, hours out in the field, and a picture emerged where uh, are the hot spots uh, of this uh, flagship species. And again, we are very proud of our four or five pairs, but it's not very much compared to other places like Southern Hungary, Vojvodina, or the Danube Delta. So this is another view. and. It's more than that because we brought all the experts together, and that's something we are really good at as protected areas. We all have these white tailed eagle experts, but they needed the exchange. Out came an action plan for the conservation of the white tailed eagle, and this action plan was, plan was adopted by the European Council and thus has become an official document, an official recommendation of the uh, European Council to all the member governments. There are other species. I just put, uh, take out a few things, uh, like these little birds, the sand martin, who is breeding in steep, open, 
uh, river banks, loamy or sandy uh, river banks, or the little ring plover, who is breeding on gravel banks or um, sand banks. And they are excellent indicators for dynamic river structures. So we took them, and Daniel Parks organized a Danube-wide monitoring for them. And this gives a very clear picture of the hydromorphological state, uh, state of the Danube. And you can learn from this that, for example, the San Martin has more or less completely disappeared from the upper Danube. Uh, you can see where the good parts of the Danube are and where the heavily modified are. And this, uh, this uh, monitoring, this survey, has become part of the joint Danube survey of ICPDR. Uh, and this is also, I think, an important extension of this joint Danube survey because it brings in the, the new dimension of hydromorphology, which was not uh, which was not the focus of this giant Danube service survey before. So it raises the question of sediment, because that's where they're breeding. And it gives again a riverwide view, a which is on the Danube, a transnational view. And the, the, the question of sediments is a transnational question, because they should come from, up, from upstream and go down uh, downstream, and if we look at these birds and if we create an awareness of the needs and of the state uh, uh, of these birds, then we promote again this uh, view, this riverwide view, for example on sediments, but also on river restoration. In all this, in most of these protected areas, more or less smaller, bigger projects of river restorations are going on, like here in our park, uh, river bank where this uh, uh, bank enforcement has been taken away, and we have nice, uh, uh, natural, recreated, restored river banks. This is very important for us, but it's also an inspiration for others. There are lots of people, also from our partners, coming to see that, and in the end, I inspired to continue with this uh, work, for example, in Slovakia by Bros, and maybe they will win the River Prize because they are doing activities like this. But again, if you go, for example, to the Danube Delta, to the Sulina Channel, in the same years as we have restoration work here, they are starting to reinforce the river bank and this is also an international business. You see the German flag, the German companies here working. So it's important to connect all this, to, uh, and Daniel Park plays a certain role in this. Uh, there are other restoration issues like the modification of grinds, which many, where there are now different experience in different countries, which have, which come together, uh, the restoration of side arms, and so on. Some stories to tell. There's an initiative we started, uh, Wild, uh, Danube Wild Islands, uh, with the vision to create a wild island corridor on the Danube. There are many uh, very valuable islands still left on the Danube, which are not in the focus of public awareness. It's some future initiative. Of course, if you tackle all these questions, you have to talk also about navigation. Uh, we have developed strategy on conservation and navigation, analyzing all the issues and putting them together in a Danube-wide perspective. We started cross-sectorial cooperation with the waterway sector, the waterway authorities, also within a Southeast European project. Um, and Daniel Parks has become a flagship project of the new European Danube region strategy. So we have, and this is really important, the first time in history we have a common European legal framework, not Ottoman law and Habsburg law or Soviet law and Western law. 
we have a common European framework for like Natura 2000, but also for the transport sector, and we have the Danube River Basin Management Plan. This is all a common frame, but the reality is, of course, very, very different. This is our most upstream partner in Ingolstadt. Ingolstadt is fam famous for, for their Audi factories. So it's a rich, re uh, uh, a rich region, yeah, exporting their products all over the world with highest quality. And this is the Danube Delta. This is what is where we still have people fishing, making their, li their living with fishing. Yeah, and not so, housing is not, yeah. So this is all Europe, this, and these great differences, they also uh, affect conservation of rivers and, um, and restoration of rivers. If you go to Neuburg, Ingolstadt, it's all dammed. The whole upper dam, Danube is dammed, but there's also awareness what has been lost. So there's a restoration project, an ambitious one, with all state-of-the-art monitoring, le legislative process, etc. And they're creating, uh, a restoring a little side arm uh, beside the dam, Danube. And it costs a lot of money, and it's a great achievement. If you go to the delta, you see river restoration without any money. So this is a big a dike, a uh, which is from Ceausescu time that broke during the flood. And I don't know many, how many square kilometers have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah have been reflooded. And the question is do they leave it like this or do they rebuild the dike? And that's also where the wealth in biodiversity is and the richness in bird life and fish life, etc. So this is the challenge we have in Europe, to bring that together. Um, and there the Danube region strategy is, of course, this is the political aim of this. And what's so special and interesting on, the, on this region's, Danube region strategy for river people is, that the river, that the European Union puts a river in the focus of a macro regional identity. And we should use the chance, the chance to uh, have a living river that can really serve as a focus of identity. And the Rhine has the salmon and the vision that the salmon came back, come back comes back as we heard yesterday we have the sturgeon, the beluga sturgeon, and as it was with the Rhine, nobody knows how that really can happen, that this fish comes back to Vienna, and here he played an important role on the Vienna fish market centuries ago, how that can happen again. But we have it in our visitor center in Ort, and this was produced by our Romanian colleagues, and in Tulcea, in the Delta, the same, the brother of this beluga is in front of the uh, visitor center of the uh, uh, Danube Delta administration. So what we can do, we, bef uh, we can bring people together uh, that, that are not the most powerful people, but people who can do a lot and will do a lot, and winning the River Prize would help us, would be a great boost for all these people, both financially and mainly morally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil, for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, I tried to present you a smaller river, not the big dimension as the Danube is. Uh, the River Moor. This river is also part of the Danube catchment. But where it is? It is in the southeastern part of Austria. 
in the federal country of Styria. And Styria is also called the green hut of Austria because of 60% uh, of this country is covered by wood. The total length of the River Moor is 455 kilometers, almost 300 kilometers of them are in Styria, and the total basin is 13,800 square kilometers, and 10,300 of them are part of Styria. The River Moor has its origin in the federal province of Salzburg at approximately 1,900 meters above sea level on the north slope of the so-called Hafner Gruppe. The river is also border to Slovenia on a length of 35 kilometers, and therefore we have a close cooperation and partnership with Slovenia, and we do this in the bilateral commission for the river Moor, and we have also realized a lot of projects together with our Slovenian partners. After about 445 kilometers, the river Moor enters the river Trava near Legrad at the Croatian-Hungarian border at the sea level of 130 meters. From the historical point of view, the entire river system, including its lateral branches and islands, was up to 1.2 kilometer wide in the border region. It was a highly dynamic river, not influenced in its status by humans. The River Moor and its branches changes in the course of history. In the 19th century, there were a lot of systematic regulations and river trainings. Distributaries cut off in order to intensify agricultural use and for the protection against flood. But it was only a mean water regulation at this time. Another point was in the 20th century, um, with the growing economic and the development of economic, it was an expansion of hydropower plants, uh, more in the middle section of the River Moor. Uh, and the worst situation was in 1960s and the 1970s through the chemical contamination. Wastewater of industrial plants, um, mostly paper mills and communes, and the River Moor considered as one of the dirtiest rivers in Europe. The situation in the early 1980s was that the people were driven away from the river, and uh, altogether the situation around the River Moor became unbearable. What happened? It was a high investment in wastewater disposal. There were started special programs for ecological regeneration, measures aiming for public awareness, and the first trends towards nature-orientated river engineering were started in the 1980s. And we had also um, a very intense cross-border communication with our neighbors. And so the water quality uh, changes, and in 2005, um, it was the quality on the mostly part of the river uh, in the step one or two, and in the downstream parts, the quality of step two. And you can see here is a big change in um, the quality of the river moor. This was the necessary precondition for starting ecological measures and for measures for river restoration. The next step was that um, um, protected areas were defined, Natura 2000 areas, and also on some points and local points, nature conservation areas, natural monuments, and protected landscapes. At the beginning of the uh, 1990s, we started with um, EU founded river restoration projects. Uh, we start in the uh, so called Krenz Moor, it's um, the downstream part with interact projects. And in 2003, we start with live nature project on the upper parts of the moor in a length of about 90 kilometers. 
the new targets for re renaturation of the river was um, the restoration of the typical hydromorphic structures, the in initiation of dynamic processes, the creation of space for flooding areas, stabilization of the riverbed, especially in the downstream areas where we have a big lack of uh, gravel materials. Um, improvement of bed load balance, restoration and improvement of a variety of aquatic and terrestrial habitats, protection and initiation of alluvial forests, and a very important point is um, the target for growing public awareness for environmental aspects. It was also um, a very important point um, to have a close cooperation with stakeholders we involved in all projects, uh, the economic water uses, energy sectors, nature conservation, and especially municipalities. Uh, and other important partner for all the project are the owner of the fishing rights along the River Moor. We started also with technical and scientific support with various planners and different universities, so we have also uh, a close cooperation with the University of Ljubljana from Slovenia. Here are some examples of the um, live project on the upper part of the river Moor. It was the so-called Project Vajan. We started this project in 2006. Another part is from the uh, actual life project also in the upper part of the River Moor, it's the so-called project Lessa Ao. Um, main part was um, the creation of new side channels along the River Moor. And in the uh, downstream part, in the so-called border section of the Moor, uh, our main project is in Gostov. It was a widening up of uh, the riverbed and also uh, to create new side channels of the river. The material of the side channel was digged in the uh, mainstream uh, and this helped uh, also to bring some gravel and bed load material into the main riverbed. Uh, another point is with um, renaturation of the banks in uh, immediately at the port to Slovenia in Sicheldorf and this project was finished in 2012. Altogether on the River Moor we had uh, 28 uh, EU founded activities and measures. Um, the length of these measures all in, in total uh, 21 kilometers and affected um, is a longer uh, part of the river of, of about 100 kilometers. And the investment in this time was about 12.5 million uh, euros. We did also a um, very intense monitoring program and, uh, program and the result of the fish monitoring is the newly created habitats are accepted by many juvenile fish and there are even more demanding species. Altogether, we have um, 49 different fish species in the river Moor. Um, the reason for this is that there is a connection over the river travel also to the Tenube River. And there is still a high ecological potential. Uh, the same is uh, for amphibians. We did also monitoring for the vegetation. The hydrologic regime in the floodplains was improved and directed towards the original state. Uh, we found out the suitable conditions for rejuvenation for the riparian vegetations um, and the big problem is uh, invasive species and we make a separate management um, for this issue. Um, also very important was the monitoring results of the bed load transport. Uh, the bed level within the restored uh, reach has been raised in the last six years. And the observed river bank erosion indicates further widening in this part of the river. Very important is also the public environmental awareness. Uh, the implementation of measures is most successful if there is a well-planned information basis provided for the pu public to make decisions understandable and transparent, to shorten the prevalent implementation of projects, to create environmental awareness, to bring population 
back to the nature and back to the river, and to invite the population to use nature as a living leisure and recreation space. So we organized a lot of school projects, competition and scientific classes. Uh, we organized also press conferences, festival and sporty activities along the river Moor. Important is um, that um, to overcome the conflict between hydropower, the existing hydropower, and um, planned expansion and nature protection. So we developed a management plan, uh, especially for the whole length of the River Moor. The core is to balance the interests of the energy sector and those of river protection and restoration, focusing, focusing on river ecological aspects. Uh, the management plan um, has a classification of different river sectors. Uh, there are uh, ecological priority zones, trade-off zones, and zones of no particular designation. And this is an um, uh, important part uh, for the future negotiation along the whole river system. This overview shows that we are working together with a lot of different partners from the um, governmental organizations um, up to the uh, stakeholders and also private engineers um, such as Freiland Civil Engineering LLC. We're working with this private company uh, in the last years uh, uh, very close together with all project and uh, we have also prepared together um, this uh, presentation and the application for the river prize. So the River Moor in Styria has uh, different functions. For example, uh, the ecological fun functions uh, and the function for um, the creation and recreation of new habitats. For example, for the Danube Salvum, uh, for the so-called Nase, also of the sector of birds. We have the kingfishers again there and the bank swallow, typical um, uh, species for the river, but we have also habitats for the not so typical species of this river. Um, the function of the river is also for flood protection, for uh, retention, uh, natural water retention measures are part of the whole river systems. Um, the river has also a transport function. You see here uh, a ferry between Austria and Slovenia. Um, there is also the energy function. Um, here, this example is the hydropower Mura with a new fish ladder. There is also a cultural function. There's the ship mill uh, near Murek. And uh, a very important point is, uh, from our point of view, also the function uh, for leisure and education. Especially, we put a uh, focus also to make um, uh, renaturation measures in the cities, for example, um, in the city of Graz. Even this is an important point to uh, identify the pupils with the river system. And all these functions of the river and all the sectors, we try to support and to push with our river restoration measures on the whole system of the River Moor. Many thanks for your attention. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad to be here at this occasion, having the possibility to present our NGO and some results of our joint work. So our NGO is based in Bratislava, capital city. We are active mostly in the region of southwestern Slovakia, and the name of our Slovak name of our NGO could be in English translated something like a Regional Association for Nature Conservation and Sustainable Development. We do lots of actions along the Danube, but also in other areas in our region, in mountains or 
terrestrial habitats or education or whatever. Uh, our NGO has been founded in 1997 at 1st of April, but actually, you can see now, it was not just a joke. Okay, so here is the map of our section of the Danube, and the green is the area of the floodplain where we are active, okay? And the red is the part, uh, Hungarian part of the floodplain where we have also some cooperation and activities from our, from our projects. But this border doesn't really exist in the nature, it's just a political line in the map. Uh, with our actions, we try to uh, to get closer to pictures of Danube, as we can see in the in the old maps. So it's not possible to do it so much, but I would like to show some examples of our uh, more uh, successful actions, or more extensive. In our our projects, we always work in partnerships with uh, especially state water management enterprises or university in Bratislava or other institutions, as such actions cannot be done just by NGO, which basically has uh, absolutely no legal competencies to do anything, basically. So here we have the and we focus on restoration of few uh, large uh, river branches, side branches of the of the river Danube, or once it, it used to be a uh, one part of the extensive river bed of, of the of the Danube, and we have selected some scenarios, and we decided for one place to be most realistic and efficient to be restored nowadays. So this branch was one of the very few to be still connected with the Danube at the bottom part, but not, not flowing anymore. And here, so we decided to restore it. This is the bank of the Danube at the place before, before the restoration actions. And here are some slides from the, from the works ongoing. We had to excavate uh, kind of a canal or in, in the former riverbed, which was artificially filled by some materials, few in some 80s, from 60s to 80s, and it was overgrown by forest. Uh, we, we did excavation of this on a size, on a length of, uh, of uh, 250 meters. The result was 10 meters wide at the bottom, but it looks quite artificial, don't you think so? But actually, the, the water, water made it just when we finished the works, already in the first day, the water sta uh, started to raise up and it made the river banks and riverbed looking much more natural. We were looking uh, forward very much to be first people after some decades to go down on the boat through this river, through this river branch, but apparently, uh, crew of the Romanian Euroship was faster, which <laughs> crashed straight into our inflow object and made some uh, complications. So even quite a good project manager hardly can count with all the factors which happens during the, the project. Uh, however, these are, these are pictures from the, from the last summer. The river branch, river branch looks like this, very nice, very natural. It's much wider than, 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 than the pure construction ended. So what is very important, we didn't, we basically opened the space for the river and the river, river bed was very modified and modulated by the river. So now we have there this gravel areas, which is very rare nowadays. And we have the steep banks Kingfisher, of course, we have them as well. Uh, two pairs of kingfisher started to breed, breed in these steep, steep walls immediately next season after restoration. And the area is also very popular for local people for swimming, fishing, uh, and so on. A few examples of, of other actions, such as removal of this barrier in the river branch near Rusovce, uh, which is edge edge of the Bratislava. So this is picture basically before and after. And we removed 
four such barriers in this uh, river branch along about three and a half kilometers. Uh, again, in some areas, uh, there is situation of lack of water due to human alteration of terrain and uh, kind of our artificial structure, which doesn't allow to water come again to the, to the areas. So by creating such artificial inflow object, we have been able to, to allow water flowing in the former branches and to, to support growing on floodplain forests and all the species it includes. We did such measure on several, several places. I'm showing just, just some of them. Another action is attempt to restore the river branch near the uh, river, former large uh, river marshland. Uh, but it's in the area near to the water dam Gabčikovo. The situation is a bit complicated, so, so we tried to get the water from the right side seepage canal. Uh, we have been successful so far to restore water in, in, in all this area of, of remnants of river branches and in canals to bring the water to the marshland. So you can see increase of water for about one meter in one month since putting this in work. This is a riverbed of one oxbow before and after, after the water came there. A big conservation success is the return of the species Aitia niroka, I guess, uh, which was, which disappeared from, from the area because of lack of such habitats and it started to to breed there immediately. Another very, uh, can say, large-scale restoration is the restoration of Velkolelske Rameno River Branch, which is at the Danube River before the town Komarno. Mm. Uh, you can imagine to get permissions for such uh, actions, piles of papers and agreements need to be arranged for, for a couple of years. And for these uh, actions, which have some international impact, we basically take the water from the international water course. As the border with Hungary is going in the middle of the river, we uh, had to obtain also agreement of uh, Transborder Commission of, of Waters, Slovakia and Hungary. But it was not a big problem because with this project, Annually, we attend the meeting of this commission and we, we present them success and what we are doing in the project and we are not threatening anything and it's, it's good, so it, it works a lot. So again, we identified some places where the, the river branch uh, could, be, could be restored. As almost everywhere along the Danube in our region, these openings of the river branch have been have been filled artificially, and uh, to get the permission was even a bit more complicated as these objects were built somehow in line with uh, planning of Nadmarosh step of this international Gabčikov Nadmarosh water dam, and this object were now, well, uh, we don't say demolished, we say up updated. It sounds better for our our partners. Uh, however, uh, we have been able to, to make the opening of the river branch both on the upper end and opening to, to outflows of the, of the river branch. So here are some, some pictures from the quite large scale restoration <coughs> works in, in, the, in the area. This is the inflow, inflow object. Uh, in the dry dry period of the of the year, in winter, it is 120 meters wide, and it is built on the level which was allowed by this uh, commission of border waters, which is basically level of low regulation and navigation water plus some reserve of uh, half a, half a meter. And this is this is how it looks with the water for, for most, most of the year. Uh, what was uh, 
very nice at this action. These restoration works were ongoing there for about half a year with three such nice machines working non-stop there and so on. And it was very nice that uh, the local people were coming there for family trips, uh, watching it, looking at the machines, and that really for this, this, uh, these uh, measures, we got very big uh, positive response from the local community. So we, we, in all projects, we can get some positive evaluation from the European Commission and all kinds of officials. But I think if the people in local pub all discuss the river branch restoration and they are, they are very happy how good it will be for fishing and swimming again, I think this is really a success at the, at the local level. And as you know, this uh, nature protection, it's not easy to, to, to get positive acceptance uh, by, the, by the locals in, in many actions. Uh, another action was removal of the bank embankment on rather small sections of the of the river bank, but its big importance in Slovakia. It's, it was a pilot pilot measure, and it was it was realized by the Slovak State Water Management Enterprise as we contracted them to do it. So it's the first time they were putting stones opposite directions from the bank on the boat. So the pilot, uh, pilot message of this is very, very important, as our official policy used to be usually uh, quite opposite policy of our water, water managers. But now it's, you can see it's, it's possible. Also, our water Slovak Water Management Enterprise, they designed the, the projects for the river branch restoration. We tried to order it from them. So now it's really, uh, we can present this as a common result, uh, which I'm uh, also, this, for these big river branches, I think it's very good that all parties involved are happy with the result. So it's not the victory of NGO on the, on the loose of somebody else who when it gets power in a few years, it, it will turn the situation. I think we are all happy, and it's 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 the best situation to keep it long-term working. And this is again a restoration of selected river bank at the very end section of the Danube in Slovakia. Uh, and next season, uh, already already next season, almost 1,000 pairs of Saint Martins appeared on on, on this this river bank. Uh, in our actions, with, with the projects, we can do, we try to do such uh, pilot actions uh, and to include all kinds of stakeholders and authorities, but always we try to speak this, with them that with the project we can do very little and we would be very happy if this is part of their official policy of managing and maintaining the rivers from the annual budgets and our taxes. So uh, another activity is to increase the biodiversity and restore natural habitats. It's a restoration of meadows, grassland and, and reed beds by, by dif different me means grassing the arable land and so on. The most successful is the grazing by domestic animals. It's also the most beautiful action. Also, of course, the most uh, complicated and difficult and funny as well. And uh, along these actions, we, we do lots of awareness, promotion activities uh, involving uh, people, taking them in the field in order to understand what we are doing and in order to, to support this effort from, from their position and to be happy what we are doing. Uh, the best is if, if we can get stakeholders on the board so they have the feeling it's their idea what we are doing. And so that, that were a few examples of the actions we do together with many different partners and institutions.